This week, we're going to be taking a look at the origins of the Disney Cruise Line. But we're not going to be talking about that ship, or that ship, or that one, or that one. We're going to be talking about, that's right, the Big Red Boat. The Disney Cruise Line officially launched their first cruise in July of 1998. But in order to explore the full origins of these popular excursions, we first have to go back 14 years to 1984. At that point, Disney was looking to get into the cruise industry. It was a market that was on the rise, and it happened to be right in Disney's backyard. With the Caribbean so close to Florida, more and more cruise ships were sailing out of Floridian ports. And rather than look at this as a competitive threat, Disney saw an opportunity to grow. The problem with cruises, as it turns out, is that the barrier of entry is extremely high. Cruises require, well, cruise ships. And cruise ships, at hundreds of millions of dollars apiece, aren't cheap. Things would eventually change for Disney, but it's important to remember that this was 1984. They had just finished off a decade of stagnation that was topped off with a hostile takeover attempt that cost them a pretty penny to ward off. Eisner would eventually turn the company around and start an era of explosive growth, but at that point they simply couldn't afford to build their own cruise ships. So instead, they chose to test the waters by partnering with not one, but with two cruise lines. The first was a short partnership with Norwegian Caribbean Lines. Together they offered a one-week cruise in November of 1984 called Fantasy, which sailed out of Miami on the SS Norway. It took passengers to St. Thomas, Nassau, and Big Stirrup Key. For prices ranging from $975 to $2,700 per person, the Fantasy Cruise offered fireworks, a live performance of the ride Pirates of the Caribbean, a goofy-themed Olympics, and all of the traditional cruise recreation such as pools, bars, and gambling. Embracing the all-inclusive model, the price even included round-trip airfare to and from Miami. At the same time, Disney was also partnering with Premier Cruise Line. The two together worked with the official airline of Walt Disney World, Eastern Airlines, and offered the Cruise and Walt Disney World Vacation Week. The package included airfare to Florida, a three to four night cruise to the Bahamas on the SS Royale, which sailed out of Port Canaveral, and a three to four night stay at Walt Disney World. As it would turn out, the experiment was enough of a success that the following year, Disney would name Premier Cruise Line the official cruise line of Walt Disney World. Cruise Line of Walt Disney World brings you the cruise that comes with a Walt Disney World vacation free. Three full days include hotel, rental car, and admission to it all, with a luxury four-night cruise to the Bahamas from Central Florida. Ask your travel agent about Premier Cruise Line's Cruise and Walt Disney World Week, the magic vacation combination. The two entered into an eight-year contract in which Premier would pay licensing fees to use the Disney name and characters on their ships sailing out of the port. Now, when it came to Premier Cruises, the most notable visual distinction was that their ships were very big and they were also very red. Premier even marketed their cruises as cruises on the big red boat. The partnership proved to be beneficial to everyone. Disney was getting to involve itself in the cruise industry without dealing with the initial costs for their own ships, not to mention getting paid to let Premier use their characters. In turn, Premier was getting the positive exposure that came with being associated with a name as popular and beloved as Disney. They estimated that within the first year of their partnership, over 60,000 passengers would embark on the cruises, and even cited that the partnership was having a positive impact on their non-Disney cruises due to the association. The cruises would continue to run for the full length of their contract, and by the time it was coming to a close in 1993, Premier was sailing with over 330,000 passengers annually and reporting over $200 million in revenue. However, when it came time to renew, Premier decided to pass. Was it a contract dispute? A falling out with Disney? Legal issues? Or perhaps a better deal elsewhere? Because you see, shortly after announcing that they would not be continuing their partnership with Disney, Premier announced that they would be partnering with Warner Brothers to offer family cruises featuring the Looney Tune characters such as Bugs Bunny. 
1994, Disney, now having lost their cruise partner, entered into talks with both the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line and the Carnival Cruise Line in hopes of forming a new collaboration. However, the negotiations with both failed to go anywhere. Without another clear cruise line to partner with, Disney finally decided that it was time for them to enter into the cruise industry on their own. Meanwhile, Premiere did do well for itself after making the switch to Looney Tunes. They continued to grow and were profitable from the venture into the late 90s. Their owners, Cruise Holdings, merged it with two other cruise lines into one larger version of Premiere in hopes of expanding to keep up with the competition. However, they'd ultimately bite off more than they could chew, and in 2000 they'd suddenly go bankrupt. It also didn't help that by then they'd be facing increased competition in the family cruise market, most notably with the Disney Cruise Line. Today, the Disney Cruise Line is considered by many to be among the best the industry has to offer, and it's ripe with its own history that I no doubt plan to cover in a future video. I just think that it's interesting that at a time where Disney's MO was to dive headfirst into new industries to approach them the Disney way, it was a partnership that would eventually lead to the Disney cruises we have today.